Hello. For this tutorial, we'll be using a 2.25 crochet hook, a claw necklace closure, 40 of the pink beads, which are size 6, 60 of the white beads, which are a size 6 also. I have here a beading needle that will fit into the center of these small beads, and I have crochet thread. One is pink, and one is a pink variegated. We will be using the two of them together. To begin, you're going to want to thread your needle with the two threads of the crochet. What I usually do is I get them wet and then I squeeze them together so that they're kind of flat while they're wet and then I feed them through the eye of the needle and it does go through quite easily. You only need a short tail maybe about three inches. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load on three white beads and two of the pink beads. This will be our sequence that we will use for each loop, the three and the two. Continue filling your thread with these beads with white three and pink two until you have them all loaded on to your thread. After you have loaded all your beads on your thread. You should end with the last set being white. White. And at this time, you can go ahead and remove your beading needle. With a tail approximately 10 to 12 inches from the end, let's go ahead and place our slip knot. And we're going to bring up the first set is three whites and three pinks. But we're going to bring up two sets to begin with. We have not started our repeat yet. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just as if we were going to do a chain stitch, we're just going to wrap it around and pull it through and tighten up as best you can and then chain four. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to bring five more and do like we're doing another chain stitch. Just pull it over and bring it through and then snug up on your thread again and then push it to the front or the back. Just going to push it out of the way. Now between the white and the pink we're going to add a double crochet And then we're going to add four more for a total of five double crochet. Be careful not to get your beads in between. We just want them on 
the outside and the inside of our double crochet shell that we're putting in here. One, two, three, four, and here's our fifth one. The reason why I chose variegated is because with the shade of pink, it'll add some color and dimension as it'll go along. So, this is where our repeat will begin. This setup was only for our beginning. So let's pull in five more beads. But at this time, take the rest of your beads and kind of slide them down your, your thread because making the double crochet stitches does take up extra thread. It's easier to pull it back and to have it in your way as you're crocheting. And then we're going to do like another chain stitch and snug it up. Take your work. I'm right handed so I'm turning it to the right. And here we're going to do another set of five double crochets between the white and the pink. Kind of reminds me of a cherry blossom tree. Spring coming so beautiful. If you've ever seen cherry blossom petals fall from the tree, it looks like snow gracefully falling to the ground. It's absolutely beautiful. Here in the United States they have the Cherry Blossom Festival every year and I try to go because I love seeing the trees all in bloom and it's just so beautiful. So here's, we're adding on our shell, and as I said, we're continuing on. This is another part of our repeat. From what you do from now on until we get towards the end will be the same repetitious stitch. So here we're going to act like we're chaining on with our five added beads. Take it, twist it to the right. Now in between the white and the pink, we're going to add five double crochets. Sometimes it's tricky at first to get that first stitch in there, but it does, it does take a little encouragement and it does go very well. So there's one, two, and here's our bead saying hello. I'm ready to be beautiful in this bracelet. <laughs> There's three. Here's four. And here's five. And you'll always have this one loose, but um on this side loose but when we get to the end I'll show you how to close it off and make this into a beautiful bracelet. Now because this is a repeat pattern I'm going to go over it again. So we pull up our five beads. We need to make sure that we have extra thread to do our stitch. We do like we're doing a chain stitch, just bringing that thread through the loop, turning it to the right, and then what's next? Yes, the five double crochets. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to stop here. I'll show you my progress as I go along. Continue on. Here I am showing my progress. I have 
completed quite a few of these and I have a few left. This will be big enough to fit on my wrist and I think it looks very nice. Keep on going and we'll meet you when it's time to finish. Well, I have come to the end of my bracelet, so I wanted to show you how I finish it. <clears throat> Sorry for my hoarseness. I believe I might be catching something with all this hot and cold weather we're having. So, when you get to the end, you want to go up and you want to go in between the two beads and make a slip a slip stitch. Okay? And then you want to cut a piece of thread long enough and this will finish it. Now back to the task <laughs> of threading our needle again. So we want to take both ends. Now I'm putting it between, I'm sucking on it and I'm putting it between my teeth to flatten it. Okay, so you can see it's kind of flat. Now I'm going to flatten it more with my fingers and then it does go through. It takes a little coercing <laughs> but it does go through. Oh, it looks like one of them did. So let's try it again on the second one here. Now let's make sure one went through. So let's try it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? No, 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 no. In between the teeth it goes and flatten it there I hate threading beading needles. You know why? I wear bifocals for crying out loud. Actually, I wear trifocals. Believe it or not, I do ride a motorcycle. And so I have to have a trifocal so I can see the speedometer. <laughs> but we're talking crochet here. So I'm trying to show you the fun that I have loading these beading needles. Oh, oh, darn. <laughs> Yeah, keep laughing. One of these days you might have to wear bifocals. I don't wish that on anybody. Look at that. Can you believe that? Look at that little knot. <laughs> oh, gee. Anyway, sometimes you have to add humor to these videos so you don't make them so dull and boring. Are you having fun laughing now watching me do this? Oh, gee. <laughs> um, okay, so sometimes it goes in there and sometimes it don't. Now, the bad thing, you can't really use a needle threader in these beading needles because um, the eye is so small. So, let me get out my claw. Now they do sell decorative um, pieces, but I like these little claws because they attach easily. So we're putting it on. It's all the way down here at the end. Let's go through this. I'm going to go through it a couple of times so that way we know that the claw will not fall off. So here's our second time and that'll be good. Now to make sure that this does not fall off, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I normally do. I weave it in. I find one of these stitches here, not at the end, but in the in the in the design. And I'll take one of these double crochets and I will go up and down it. 
Um, this one looks pretty good. Let's go up. And then we'll go down. See, because you're not really distorting the double crochet. You're just making it a little thicker. But you also want to make sure that all this work you did on this beautiful bracelet does not fall apart. So here I'm weaving and weaving. And then I'm going to go over this way. And because of the thread being a little bit thicker than the needle, that's the reason why I'm having to pull like I am. And I think we're done here. There we go. And you can't even tell. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and cut that. Now I'm not going to put you through the hazards of watching me thread the other side. So go ahead and thread the other side and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, as I breathe a sigh of relief, it took me about 10 minutes to load this needle. <laughs> you can laugh now, it is very funny. <laughs> Let's go ahead and finish the other end of our bracelet. So we're going to go ahead and come up this chain stitch here. And like I said, the thread is a little bit bigger than the beading needle. I could have went to a larger needle, but because the crochet is small as well, I decided not to. So, let's work our way over to another double crochet. And I think I'm going to go to the second set. which will not be this set here, it'll be this set here. And let's just weave in and out so that we can lock this side in. Now, I'm not a big fan of glue. I'm not a big fan of any kind of other stuff. Um, I've been crocheting probably for mm, 50 years as well as knitting and embroidery. When I was growing up it was um, a thing that all young ladies did. I am 60 now so it's just something I've always done. It was just part of my upbringing was to know all about these domestics and stuff. So I learned from my grandmother, bless her heart, she was very patient and very kind, I miss her. So as we come to the end of this, weaving in and out, I think this will do it. Let's go ahead and cut it close. Now to close this thing, it's designed so that you can do it by yourself. You put your in the claw and it'll come right over the chain stitches here. And it'll hold it just like this. So if I had to put this on, I could do, oops, of course it's because it's on camera. <laughs> Let's try it this way. Okay, so I can take the claw here. Well, you get the idea. Crying out loud. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoy sharing these things with you. Crochet is such a big part of my life, part of my upbringing. It's a beautiful bracelet. Be perfect for spring. 
with the uh, cherry blossoms and other beautiful flowers that are waking from the, the winter. Enjoy it. And thank you so much for watching.